All right, so in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys uh, how I've implemented wall running. I know there's a lot of tutorials out there, or at least a, a few tutorials out there on how to do it, but uh, I watched pretty much all of them, and most of them had, well, all of them had issues with uh, certain edge cases. Um, and so I wrote my own, and since it took me such a long time, I figured I'd make a tutorial on exactly how I did it. But basically, the way it works is, so you can double jump, um, and basically when you land, it will allow you to double jump again. Or if you land on the side of the wall and jump off of it, you can also double jump again. But in order to run on a wall, you just run towards it and you hold down the, in this case, the right arrow key and forward, of course. And in this case, the left arrow key and your guy will just run around the, or run along the side of it. Um, some things that are, no, are worth mentioning about the implementation that I'm gonna show you how to do is that you can also run around the outside of something and kind of look around at the same time. Uh, a lot of the tutorials that I've seen in the past uh, don't really work too well in this use case. Uh, and you can do this as long as you're looking somewhat towards the wall. As soon as you look like behind you, it will kick you off the wall. And you can also run around the inside of objects, kind of like this, and jump your way up if you want to. Uh, you can also run you know, do this type of thing, or you jump, jump, jump. Um, another thing that's worth noting is it works with pieces like this, where you have, so this wall, and this wall, and this wall, and this wall are all separate pieces. And some of the tutorials I've seen don't actually work like this. They don't allow you to do that. Um, but mine does. And the last thing that's really nice about mine is that you don't have to tag any of the pieces as runnable, or you know, check any checkboxes for how they do collision, it will just kind of work. So you can see, you can obviously run along this wall because it's straight up and down. Um, you can run, run along this wall because it's too steep to walk on. But this one you can actually still walk on because it's not that steep. And it won't try to wall run on it. And there's nothing you have to do to tag it to tell it, like, hey, don't try to wall run. It will just figure that out for you. Um, and I guess one more thing to note is like if you're trying to go backwards and wall run, it won't let you because you can only wall run forward as most games have it. So with that being said, I'll go into the implementation of it um, from scratch. So open up the Epic Scheme launcher and launch whatever version of Unreal you're using. I happen to be on 4.23.1. And then go to new project and blueprints and select the first person and call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine wall running. And we wait for Unreal. All right. I'm going to go ahead and move this over here so I can reference it because there's a good amount of stuff involved in this. Um, Give me a second. Okay, so as you can see, this is just the normal uh, first person template. The first thing that you always got to do is you got to turn down that sound because it's ridiculously way too loud. And I think it's in audio this. Yes. Make it 0 0.1. Okay, much better. Now we can actually work. So open up the first person character blueprint. Sorry, I'll skip it around really fast. I'll go back just in case. So in the content folder, you have first person blueprint, blueprints, and first person character. You're going to open that up to this wonderfulness that Epic has provided for us. And we're not going to change most of this because we don't really care about it. Um, but what we are going to do first is kind of lay out the variables that we're going to need and the functions and all the events. And I might be a little bit more confusing this way, but it's going to be a heck of a lot faster. <laughs> um, so just bear with me. And by the end of it, hopefully it will all uh, make sense. I think I've done it in a way that makes, uh, makes it pretty easy to understand what's going on. So over here on the left, uh, we're going to create a few variables. So click this little variable button. And the first one we're going to create is the wall 
run direction. And so this is the direction that you're running on when you're on the wall. And this is going to be a, a vector. And one thing that's nice to do is if you click on the variable you made and you come over here and under category, add it to a wall, oops, add it to a wall running category just so it's a little bit easier to figure out which variables are the ones where you care about. All right, uh, and then we're gonna add another one called wall running, question mark. And this is a bool for whether or not we are wall running. And another one called jumps left, which is basically how many jumps we have left before we can no longer jump. Drag that up. And we want another one for max jumps and drag that up. So this is basically how many jumps we can do in a row before we have to land on the ground. Um, and with this one, if you click on it, a good thing to do is come over here and hit blueprint read only, which makes it constant so that uh, you can't accidentally change it in blueprints. And go ahead and compile so that we can set the default value. And I'll just set it to two, but obviously in your game, you can set it to whatever you want. Um, but two works for me. And then we need two more variables, or three more actually. We need the right axis, and this is a float. And we need the forward axis, and this is also a float. And we need one more, but before we do that, we need to create an enum, a custom enum, because it's going to be a custom enum type. So go back to your content directory and we'll just make a new folder called wall running. And in here, you're gonna wanna create a new enum. So right click, go to blueprints and go to enumeration and we'll call it E uh, wall run side. So E for enum and wall run side. And what this is going to be is it's basically just going to be left or right. If you don't know what an enum is, it's sort of just, it's ba they're basically just numbers, um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but they have names associated with them. So it's a little bit easier to figure out what's going on. So if you open this up, we want to create two, one for left and one for right. So in the top right, there's a new button. Click that twice. You'll get two new enums added to the, uh, or two new entries added to the enum. And the top one will just say left. And the bottom one will just say right. And give me one second. I'm making sure I didn't forget anything. Yep, okay. And then go ahead and save that. And then while we're here, we're gonna create one more enum that we'll need to use later. So go again, blueprints, enumerations. And this one we're gonna call um, E wall run end reason. Uh, the name might be a little weird, but basically it's the reason that you stopped wall running. So there's two reasons we're going to ever stop wall running. Uh, one reason is that we fell off the wall for some reason. So fell off wall. This is like if you run past the end of a wall or you look too far away from the wall or you stop um, pressing forward, or for some reason you just fall off the wall. The other reason you'd come off from wall running is if you jumped off of it. So, jumped off wall. And like I said, we'll use this later, so don't worry about it too too much right now. Just understand that these are the two reasons that you might stop wall running. Um, okay. So, go back to the first person character blueprint. And we can add that variable now. So one more variable and you're gonna call it wall run side. And the type is of E wall run side. And drag that up. And this is the this is the current side. So like if you're running forward and there's a wall to your right and you jump and you start wall running on that wall, then this will be set to right because the wall that you're running on is on your right. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so we got our variables created. Um, one other thing I wanna do first is 
create some handy little macros that we'll end up using. Um, so to do that, just come right here to macros and click the macro button and it'll create a new macro for you. And I'm just going to leave them empty for now and we'll come back and we'll fill them in later. I just want to get the whole setup done here first. So the first macro I want is uh, moving forward. And this is just going to be true or false for whether or not you're moving forward. And like I said, we'll fill these out later, so don't worry about it too right now. I just want to get things stubbed out so we have something to work with. Uh, so make another one and call it on wall. And this is very similar. It will return true or false if you're on the wall or not. And one more. And it's, con it's going to be called consume jump. And this one will get called right before we jump to figure out whether or not we can jump or not. But as I said, for now, we're just going to leave these empty. Um, okay, so now that we have our variables and we have some handy dandy macros, we need to create some events. And just like we did for the macros, um, I'm just going to create the events and we'll go back and we'll fill them out later. So I think this is probably the best way to do that because there's a lot of moving parts here. So let me think about which one we need first. Okay, so probably the first thing we want to do is the jump. So you can see in our game, or in my other game that I showed you first, you can jump and then you can jump twice. By default, you only jump once. So we're going to have to change that. Um, so the jumping is currently handled right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move jumping below this beautiful looking spawn projectile nonsense so we don't have to look at it okay so it's pretty simple uh, epic says if you press it jump if you release it stop jumping uh, we want to keep the stop jumping but we don't want to keep the jump because we're going to do that ourselves so go ahead and delete that and just leave like leave it like that for now we'll come back to it later um, one more event that we're going to need access to is when we land. So uh, come in here and type event on landed. And we'll just set that up there. And we need another event. Um, this one's going to be a custom event. So do add custom event. And we're going to want to call this reset jump. Maybe with a space in between. Reset jump. And this is going to take in one parameter. And it's going to be an integer. And it's going to be the number of jumps that we want to reset to. So we'll just call it jumps. All right. And that looks good. And we'll come back and we'll fill these out later. But this is what we need for the jumping in terms of events. And OK, so another event we need is uh, we need to know when we hit the wall so that we can start doing our wall run logic, potentially. So if you click on the capsule component, you can right click and there's an add event um, thing in the drop down menu. And it'll let you add events that are specific to that component. And we want the add on component hit event. And this will get called whenever the capsule component for our character uh, hits a wall, or well, hits anything for that matter. And while we're here, uh, this last one that says hit, go ahead and right click that and hit split. And that will expand the uh, structure and let you have access to everything because we'll eventually need some of this stuff. Um, but just leave that there for now. It will be fine. Also, add the event tick, which I'm sure you're probably familiar with if you do a lot of Unreal stuff. And just let that chill. We'll come back and hook that all up later. And we just need four more custom events. Uh, we need one for beginning a wall run and ending a wall run. So add custom event. And this will be called begin wall run. And we want another one, add custom event end wall run. So again, right now we're just laying out the structure of what we're going to need. And the last two that we need are for the camera tilt. So you can see when you're on a wall, it kind of tilts your camera. So we also want a 
custom event, add custom event. And this one will be called begin camera tilt. And we'll have one more, you can probably guess the name, end camera tilt. Okay, so I believe that is all the events that we need. Let me just double check. Yes, I think that's good. All right, so the last thing I wanna do in this section of the tutorial is like we did for the macros, I wanna stub out the functions that we're gonna be making because there's a few of those. Um, and then once we have that, we can actually start getting into the logic of it because we'll have all of our variables, all of our events, and all of our functions. We'll just need to figure it out or we'll just need to fill them out. So we're gonna create uh, quite a few functions here that will help us immensely. The first one is gonna be called find, run, direction, and side. And this will basically help us find which direction our character needs to be running on and which side of the wall he's gonna be running on. Um, for this one, go ahead and on the right here, click pure and on the drop down, click const. Um, you don't have to do this, but uh, you definitely should because this function is not going to be changing anything about our player character, so it should be a pure constant function. It'll make it a little bit easier to use in blueprints as well. All right, and then the next one we need is uh, can surface be wall ran? Can surface be wall ran? And this one, uh, eventually it will return a bool for whether or not a provided surface can be ran on or not obviously. All right, and this one's also going to be pure and constant because yes. Uh, next one we want is find launch velocity. So this is going to find the velocity that we want to use whenever we jump because it's going to be different depending on which keys we're pressing and if we're jumping off of a wall or if we're falling or a whole bunch of good fun stuff. So that's what that function is going to do. It's going to be super good. Um, we need another one, and this one's going to be called our required keys down. This one will also return a bool for whether or not we're pressing the required keys to complete a wall run. So, for example, if we're trying to wall run on a wall to our right, we need to be holding down forward and we need to be holding down right. And this one also should be pure and constant because it's not going to be changing anything about our character. It's just going to be doing some fun stuff. Um, all right, four more. Hang with me. I promise these functions are going to be super helpful later. And they're not all too big either. Um, this one is pretty simple. It's going to be get horizontal velocity. Um, this one's also pure const. And it's obviously just going to be getting our horizontal velocity, uh, not taking into account our vertical velocity. All right, so these are all of our pure const functions, which is indicated by them being green. And it, if you don't know what the pure const functions are, they look like this. They have they, there's no like input pin you can't drag into them. If you didn't, um, if you just make a new function called like you know whatever. Uh, and you drag it out, it, normally they look like this, blue, and you have to, you know, hook stuff up. But if it's a pure function, specifically, it won't have that. So uh, I like to make things pure whenever I can because it makes the uh, blueprints a little cleaner. Okay. Um, and then the last three functions we need are set horizontal velocity. And this one can't be pure or const because we are actually going to be changing things. So we'll just leave that be. We need one for update wall run, which is going to hold the meat of our program for um, when we're actually wall running. And then the last one we want, which might seem a little weird right now, but it's going to be called clamp horizontal velocity. And I will just explain this one later because it probably won't make too much sense if I explain it now. All right, so that is very good. We have everything set up and ready to go for the next part of the tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and end this one now, and I will see you guys in the next one.